Good evening, my Facebook community, friends, family. I want to reach out and share a personal confession with everyone because we're coming into this new year with so much trauma, so much hostility, so much stuff up in our face. How many of us are really tapping in and recognizing that it's a collective consciousness that the stuff that's come to surface, whether you like it or not, has been deep down within the trenches of our own stuff. We influence each other more than you can ever imagine. Everything from how you live your life to how others will interact with you, your belief systems, your experiences, your perceptions, your thought processes, your attachments to the way you think things should be. This all correlates to how things are drawn to you, how you interact with other people, and whether or not you are well received, or if you are liked, it starts with self. So I titled it the golden rule of love, compassion, and self-care because everything has to start with self. And many of us know the golden rule do unto others as we would want done unto ourselves but first the first question you have to ask yourself is how do i do unto myself how do i love myself do i have the compassion and do i express and demonstrate self-care in a way that really is truly loving what is my self-talk am i berating myself because whatever you're doing to yourself Internally, it's radiating out and it's being expressed whether you realize it or not in how you interact and how you, you commune with others. The people you draw into your life are going to mirror exactly where you're at in your life. If you're the type of person who is berating yourself all the time below the surface, you're probably just subtly exhibiting it with others and other people will notice it even if you don't so a lot of times because I know my own personal self-talk can be very berating you know oh you didn't meet your expectations you know you could have done better on that uh, you know it's it's beating ourselves up I know this from my own personal experience that I haven't always been the kindest with others around me as a result but with my practice, my daily yoga, my meditation, it's brought more compassion and self-inquiry in such a way, it's a conscious awareness. I'm able to see things in a slow motion now that instead of reacting, I can trace back. I can step back and take a deep breath. Where is this coming from? What was the originating source? Because if you're frustrated with somebody else, or so you think, or you think someone's doing something to you, victimizing you, it's because it started from some other source, from yourself internally. But even before that, there was a pattern set in motion for you to originate, to originate with these stories of the stories of of self hatred, these stories of I'm not good enough. You didn't just come up with this because innately we all are loving creatures. We have pure souls when we come into this life. But we're conditioned and experiences change that. So whether it's the environment through your family that you were exposed to, was it loving? Was it nurturing? Did it make you feel supported and give you that structure and security, that basis of where you can see your own confidence, see who you are, truly see the love and the beauty that you are. Because most of us don't have that. A lot of us don't. And we don't always confront that and say, wow, you know, I haven't always loved myself fully. And it takes time, patience, maturity to admit and confront. I haven't always been as compassionate and loving for others because I haven't always been compassionate and loving toward myself. And it's very humbling when you sit with that. 
because it takes a true, strong vulnerability to witness it and authenticity to step up and work on changing it. All of my life I had suffered some stomach issues. And I never really did know that it was, it was revolving around traumas from my past, but also the foods that I was putting in my body. And many of those foods were addictive foods for me because they were comfort foods, because they were foods that brought me back to happy moments with my family. My father had a pizzeria. And, you know, to become allergic to gluten and then to have lived in Italy and not recognize all the years that here I was stuffing my face with all of this, this glutinous carb food that was really addictive. Hello. I mean, what do we reach for? We go to a restaurant and the first thing they serve is bread. You know, I, I was on top of that. That was, that was a big deal. And it was an addictive food for me because it was comfort. Cookies. Pasta. Cakes, muffins, cornettos in the morning in, in Italy with the, with the cappuccino. It's all ritualistic because a lot, everything we do connects through celebration, which revolves around food. So I brought this up because I had this kind of epiphany this weekend where I like plays on words, but, and that's how I receive messages for myself. And when I was doing this inner self-reflection, I realized I had to tap into a really sore, vulnerable spot in myself where most of my life I have sought out attention from others and, and validation to feel loved, to feel accepted. And a lot of my life I felt like a victim. I felt like an outcast. I felt like I didn't belong. I worked hard. I tried hard. I would over exceed expectations because I wanted people to like me. I'd go above and beyond and, and 150%, 200%, you know, outside the norm. And at the same time, I realized I'd be victimized because it made other people look bad in my environments, especially when I was in the Air Force. And interestingly enough, when I first encountered someone in Italy who had a gluten allergy, I was ignorant to it because I was unaware. I didn't know about it because I didn't think I had it, nor did I know about it. And the thing I had to learn over this course of time was that, wow, my ignorance in recognizing that someone else might have a problem was also superseded by my really strong ego and this threat within the ego that felt like that person was threatening my comfort food. Because the first thing I said to her was, I'm so sorry, you can't eat any of these foods. And so now I'm aware of this. And when I see other people and they recognize, oh, you can't eat this food, I see where I was back then. That here I was eating all these foods that were comforting they were my addiction and the idea that somebody else couldn't eat it I felt sorry for them because I know how much I loved it but I also in a subtle way my ego saw oh my gosh what if that happened to me there was that fear of death that fear of separation for what I longed for and was attached to that's not always as easily seen when people will say things they don't realize that what we do is we compare ourselves. We make a judgment based on our own personal experience. That is the judgment that comes out when we respond to people like that. We don't turn around and see that there's more to the this, this situation, that that person may actually be perfectly fine with it, that you don't have to over-accommodate because you feel like, oh my gosh, what would I do? I don't know. How, how can you eat without gluten? It's in everything. It is everything, practically. So the, the part that was really pivotal for me this weekend was the part where I went in and I said, oh my gosh, because I revolve so much around being accepted and connecting with people, I also saw the play on words, the wheat and the gluten, gluten, glue. 
I had to come unglued, literally. That I had to separate from something that I was so attached to, so addicted to. Although my mind would say, nah, I wasn't that addicted. It did take time, and I tried enzymes, I tried everything. But I finally came to a comfortable place in my life where I don't apologize for my, my intolerance, my allergies, because it is extremely severe. I suffer from stomach problems, and it's not something I enjoy. One day of contamination of food, I can suffer for weeks. And it means me being doubled over in pain. It means heart difficulty in breathing because of the expansion of my, my stomach, the pain in my side, because what happens is it seizes up my colon. Sorry, if you didn't want to hear about, you know, bathroom talk, the reality is it destroys your digestive system for those of us who experience this to this extreme. And that means toxic, toxicity building up in my body. And I understand it's a discomfort. There's an emotional attachment in there that I haven't tried. I've tried to wrap around it, but at the same time, I'm good without it. Because I know I process through my stomach. I know that that's my emotional center and that things come up, my stomach is irritated. And I have to step back and, and be with it, just like my breath. And I also recognize if I don't get a full breath, if I'm seizing up, I'm actually suffocating my cells, my lungs, my blood, my heart, that I need to breathe. This is important. These are, these are the basics of living. These are, you know, what sustain us in this life. So going back to this coming unglued, because I'm allergic and recognizing the fact that I reached out and this was a connection with family members, you know, especially with the big family, with my parents. That's how we connected was through food. And ultimately food is what brings us together. So when you can't connect through the foods that you originally connected through, there's this feeling of alienation this feeling of abandonment again, that I was recreated, I, you know, was recreated in the sense that part of the reason I had the addiction to the food was when I would, was feeling abandoned as a child. That, those are the types of foods maybe I ate to try to recreate and, and bring back that comfort. You know, the times when I felt like I needed some more nurturing and, and care and love. I, we reach for food. We don't realize it, but that's usually the first thing we'll do, trying to recreate a memory. Because we think, oh, I crave this food. No, we crave that experience that's associated with that food, what revolved around the celebratory times, those experiences you had when you ate that type of food, that specific meal, for example. My dad made the greatest pizzas. He made the greatest steak bombs, things like that, you know. Uh, but ultimately, I had to come unglued so that I could go inside and recognize the sweet nectar of everything that I am inside is who I am. I don't need to reach out for acceptance and validation and recognition from other people. And that was tough because I didn't know that's what it really was. And that there were times since there have been times not like it was before. I, I do recognize it for other people now, more so than for myself, because of the compassion I have and seeing what I had gone through and experienced. There were times when I'd be in environments and I feel like I was abandoned and cast aside because nobody wanted to accommodate my food allergies. In fact, I could recognize that they that maybe other people felt threatened by it. And they really literally wanted to push me away because they didn't want to be confronted by it. Whether it was for themselves or they just didn't want to be bothered by somebody who, you know, had a different requirement than they did. Whatever the person's rationale, it was hurtful for me at the time. And I realize this today, I maybe I should have spoken up, but I can tell you that I'm not always the first person to admit I'm hurt. In fact, my mind had been, for many years, very strong. And that instead of speaking up and admitting I'm in pain, I'm hurt, I need somebody to be gently gentle with me, I would just push through it. 
So in the past, and in the experiences that I had where I literally felt like the outcast because I was the only one who couldn't eat the food that was being served, whether it be through teacher trainings, because I've gone through a lot of yoga teacher trainings, there's a lot of food I couldn't eat. And that created a separation for me and the people I was trying to commune with. And in that sense of abandonment and also victimization. And why do I bring this up? Because it's in my experience that has brought me to more compassion that I would want someone else to feel accepted as well and bring them into the center, being the peacemaker in, in the sense that I knew what it felt like back then. And I don't want anybody else to have to experience that. But is it really about food? No. What it really is about is being consciously aware. Conscious awareness is key. And if you can't tap into your own self and who you are consciously, becoming aware, being present in every moment, how can you extend that to other people? Everything that's going on in the world has us divided and separated. This group of people, that group of people, there's all these labels being thrown around. Black lives matter, Muslim lives matter, this one life matters, people matter. And the, the truth is, love is all there is, and we all want the same thing. We need to come back and stop putting a label and separating and dividing one another according to color, race, religion, country, whatever. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is, you and I want to be accepted for who we are. And the label does not make us who we are. That's just something categorizing. It is not a person, place, or thing. It's a description. It might be what you do, but it's not who you are. I may be a woman, but I'm still a soul and a person. Nothing outside of me can change that unless I allow it to, and I have to start from within myself. So we really need to come back together because everything out there that's going on that's rubbing people, really, you know, anger is, is a great example of showing you care. So I'm grateful personally that people are getting angry because if people don't get angry, then it doesn't, it means they don't care or they know enough to be neutral and sit calm amongst the chaos. Because here's the grace in neutrality. It's recognizing and being aware of the situation, but not becoming attached emotionally in and embroiled in the situation, not letting it take you out of your, your personal joy and out of your, your power place. Because the more attention you put on that external stuff that's really ticking you off, that's rubbing you, it's got you in a tizzy, all that's doing is feeding your ego. And when your ego feels the need to jump up and fight, you're just feeding the fuel of that fight. When you look for a fight, you get it. Even if you look to defend, you will find yourself in a fight. I'm one to say I've experienced that as well. That was a lot of my focus in life, was I noticed the things that that were made me feel like being a victim. And when I looked for that stuff, because that was just what I was used to seeing, it became habitual that I would create the situations too. I would draw those situations to myself. But the reality is we have to come back to the compassion. We have to start with ourselves. We have to see what it is in ourselves that needs healing and work on that first. And maybe you have to come unglued If you don't, how can you know what parts are inside of you? 
So ultimately, I really just wanted to share that little confession with everybody because I didn't, I don't know any better. I'm still learning. I'm human. I mean, how can I say I'm, I'm, I love animals, but I wouldn't eat animals. Now that sounds, that takes a lot of maturity and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not condoning and I'm not also, I'm also not telling people you shouldn't do this because of whatever. The balance is in yourself and the truth is in yourself. You have to be aware of who you are and what you do, what motivates you. Don't worry about other people judging you. I think you probably judge yourself enough that you don't need the extra pressure. I mean, truly, it takes maturity to recognize that you say one thing, but maybe you're a hip hypocrite in the end. I was for a lot of time in my life a hypocrite in many things, and maybe still am. I have to look at situations. But to say one thing and then do another, that's hypocrisy at its finest. And it takes true courage and maturity to see it and make that shift. Decide to change. Because guess what? Other people see what you do. And you can't hide it. What you say and what you do could be two different things. So be in your own personal integrity and authenticity. Recognize the golden rule. We all want love. Nobody's any different. We just have different ways about approaching it because we have different experiences. Yogi Bhajan has a wonderful quote and it's one of the five sutras of the Aquarian Age. If you cannot see God in all, you cannot see God at all. Because that's the truth. That is true. doesn't matter who you are, what you believe. But if you can't see the supreme, the divine, the beauty, the love in each and every person you meet, then you can't see it at all in anything. You may think you do. But you have to trace back to who are you. And that is you too. And most people don't want to be confronted with it being themselves as well. Because the God is in us, each of us. It's in me, it's in you. So I love you all. I hope you all feel inspired and compassionate. And work on a little inner awareness. Look within. Confront whatever might be itching you, making you feel uneasy. Because in the discomfort comes the miracle. So many blessings of love and light to all of you. Have an amazing week. Hopefully I can check in with you again this week because I have been offline for a while. And uh, take care. Love you.